Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews. I'm Judith and you're watching another What I'm Reading Right Now video here on the channel. This is actually going to be two weeks worth of reading because last week I caught some horrific kind of cold thing and I'm feeling much better now but I'm still a little bit grotty but last week there was absolutely no way I was going to get in front of a camera so we're here catching you up. In case you've not been here before, this is the series where I talk about what I have been reading, what I'm currently reading, and what I'm going to be reading next, along with some other bits and bobs thrown in along the way. Let's start with what I finished since last time we spoke. I finished nine things, I think. I'm not going to double check it now because I have counted it twice and I just can't keep a number in my head, but I think it's nine things. Count along at home if you're feeling snazzy. First up, I finished Elder Race by Adrian Tchaikovsky. I was in the middle of this when last we spoke. I really enjoyed this novella. I think it's a very good story. Uh, I think it's a really interesting concept. In this, we have a dual perspective book, one half of which is sort of the princess of a sort of classic-y fantasy world. She's the, I think she's the third in line for the throne, so she's kind of bimbling about and she goes to speak to the sorcerer to try and solve this problem in her lands. The sorcerer, however, is actually a alien anthropologist who has sort of been abandoned on this planet, can't contact home, and sort of the translation between them makes the sorcerer seem magical, and it's a really interesting story, seeing the translations between the two, seeing the way that science would seem like magic to someone who had no context for it, and the opposite of that and kind of the teaching the other way around. It's a really great novella, I highly recommend it. Uh, I think Adrian Tchaikovsky really worked in novella form, I was worried it would be way too chunky. The one thing I will say is if you have a digital version of this, I would recommend reading it on an actual e-reader. On a phone it got a little bit messy during a few of the formatting bits. I did finish The Wolf of Orin Yarrow, and while we're talking about it, I finished The Ikisar Falcon, which is the second book. I think I'm saying that right, but I'm not certain. These are the Chronicles of the Bitch Queen series. Yes, I'm correct. And I do have the third one, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. I was about to say I really enjoyed. I thought that both of these books, book one and book two, were pretty decent. Uh, I remember liking book one the first time I read it many years ago. I just never really got round to finishing the series. And since my overbooked video for this series is coming up, I thought it made a lot of sense to try and power through. I will say elements of this are a bit of a slog. I don't think it's like my favourite fantasy series of all time, but I definitely think it is a cool concept. We have have uh, this main character who is the queen of a nation whose husband left her the day that they were meant to be crowned together uh, and she goes to find her husband he after many years says hey let's meet up uh, and ends up getting separated from all of her guards and it's kind of a fish out of water kind of story. I like a lot of elements of this I will save my final thoughts until I finish the third book because I want to see where this character arc fully goes. I finished my audiobook of The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I don't know if you've heard of him. Um, I really liked this. I thought the audiobook was great. I listened to the Andy Serkis narrated one. A good time. You get to hear the Gollum voice. Have a wonderful day of it. Um, I thought this was good. I hadn't read The Hobbit since I was literally a child, so it was really nice revisiting it. There was a lot of things I'd forgotten about where the story goes. It's a much longer book than I remembered it being. Um, I'm not going to go through the plot of The Hobbit right now because... Frankly, you should already know it. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. We're 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 gonna say that. I have an overbooked video for this coming up soon. I'm gonna try and film that today, so I won't dwell on my thoughts on this book that pretty much everyone who wants to read it has already read, but in case you were wondering, I do recommend that audiobook. I have returned the physical copy to the library so I can no longer wave it at you, but I finished Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. Some things from the start. If you're planning on reading this, and like me, you have absolutely no recollection of anything that happened in book one, maybe give yourself a refresher. It probably would have helped me to do that. I didn't want to for multiple different reasons, mostly timing, um, and I definitely still managed to read the book fine and it all made sense. I think I just missed some of the emotional elements of the story by not picking up book one again first. I did think this was good. I think if you're slightly more into New England and the history and architecture of that, it's probably a slightly more enjoyable story. It felt to me quite similar to when people write books about Oxford, uh, and if you don't have a lot of familiarity with the place, that all feels a little bit more abstract. That was my feeling anyway. I liked the kind of mystery element. I'd read another book in this series, uh, but I won't say it blew me away. But neither did book one, so there we go. Much like book one, definitely look up the content warnings before you pick this up. On the subject of books that require content warnings, uh, I finished Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. This is so I can read the prequel. Uh, it's a complicated thing that I don't want to get into here, because it just, 
It just expresses how much of a disaster I am, a disaster completionist. I thought this was an incredibly well-written story. If you liked Nadia Korofor's Remote Control, I think you will like this. Um, like is a strong word for a book that deals with a lot of really difficult themes. It reminded me a lot of some of River Solomon's work, if you've read any of Fair stuff. I definitely feel like this is not one to go into if you're already in a bit of a, a slumpy downward place, but it is a fantastic story. It's really interesting and I'm looking forward to seeing where the prequel goes. In this we have a character who is born out of a very terrible situation and I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want to have to add content warnings to this specific video, but it is sort of a quest story within that with a lot of uh, learning about yourself, learning about magic and uh, embracing identity and destiny and all of that stuff. But I will uh, talk more about it when I've read the prequel, I think. I started my reread of the Murderbot series by Martha Wells, which hopefully you've heard about, but if you haven't, let's chat about it now. I'm doing this by audiobook because it just makes the most sense for me and I don't really want to buy all of those novellas that would cost a literal fortune. These are books about a security unit, a kind of combined human robot who has hacked their governor modules so they are sort of a bit of a rogue agent masquerading as not being so, uh, and each novella is uh, its own little adventure in Murderbot's journey. I read these a few years ago, I hadn't reread them since, and I'm having the best time with it. I powered through two audiobooks in one day. I was having so much fun. Um, I just think these are so well written, really enjoyable characters. I'm definitely getting more out of the overall theme now that I'm reading them a bit more back to back this time around. I mean, I'm two books in, who's to say? But yes, Yes to Murderbot, really excited for the next few weeks of reading those. And the last thing that I finished was He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. This is the sequel to She Who Became the Sun, and it is so good. If you like that kind of historical fantasy kind of book, if you are here for a book that is a lot about warfare and bad things happening, and again, requires a fair few content warnings, this is a great story. If you liked She Who Became the Sun, I think you will enjoy this. I just really enjoyed getting to be with these characters again. And it definitely has that feel that book one has of being a really intimate view of a history, uh, where it kind of feels like you could have the textbook next to you reading about various battles and you're just getting the very intimate personal view of that through the eyes of these characters. I really liked the exploration of gender in this. I think even more so than book one, it does some really interesting things, drawing parallels between different characters. I'm really excited for another book in this series. There we go. It feels really good to have uh, wrapped up kind of round two of the sapphic trifecta, which is of course this, the unbroken, and Jasmine Throne. So I, now I can just start preparing myself for round three. It's gonna be great. I only have one thing left to read this week, which is honestly phenomenal and mostly because I bumped a bunch of stuff into next week, um, but I am meant to be reading The Book of Phoenix, which is that prequel to Who Fears Death. Uh, I'm gonna start that today and I'm probably gonna have a good time with it. After that, I'm gonna jump straight into The Dragon of Jinsane, which is the third book in that Chaos Veloso Chronicles of the Bitch Queen. Um, this is the library copy, so that's why it's shining at you in my wonderful haha -ha studio lighting. Looking forward to finishing this off. Glad I could get a physical copy because I like big chunky books like this, I like chunking out the pages and splitting it up that way, it just suits me more. Looking into next week, um, I have a bunch of other stuff, including I'm gonna try again to read Bloodhound and Mastiff by Tamara Pierce. Who knows how it's gonna go? I'm going to do a reread of Once Upon a Winter because Once Upon a Summer is out very soon. I will put the cover up for that. Disclaimer, I have a personal connection to this series, so I, I'm not being paid to promote it, but I do have that connection. I'm really looking forward to doing the cheeky little reread for Overbooked and then snagging myself a copy of the summer one and just getting all of the seasonal vibes. And I'm also going to be reading Raven Song by TJ Klune. This is the sequel to Wolf Song, which I very much enjoyed. Uh, I have to psych myself up for another kind of angsty, werewolfy, paranormal book. Uh, I'm not quite psyched up for it yet, so I'm going to give myself the weekend to prepare. New things added to my bookshelves. I haven't added these to my TBR because I have technically read them, but I did receive my Illumicrate editions of Laura Olympus Volumes 3 and Volume 4. They have the beautiful sprayed edges. They're very lovely. They match my other two editions. This has been the first book purchase I've made in a good few months, and I'm really excited about it, and I need to make space on my shelves so they'll fit. But I am planning on reading those, and I'm waiting on my library reservation of Painted Devils, because I'm gonna get it from the library and then decide if I want to buy a copy. 
I'm trying my best. New releases. Shanghai Immortal came out. I really love the cover for this. I've not looked up anything else about it, but I think I'm gonna try and persuade the library to get a copy so I can read it because it looks stunning. I already mentioned Once Upon a Summer. That is out now. If you don't know, this is uh, an indie anthology that is themed around a season and it's fairy tales in that season and it's just gonna be wonderful and I happen to have read one of the stories already and I know that it's really good so I'm excited to read that again. I talked a bit last time we spoke about Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. This is a historical romance novel that has a lot of fantasy elements to it. I liked this. The romantic pairing wasn't 100% for me but I did think it was a good book overall and if you like the idea of curse tablets from a Roman bath this might be for you. There we go. And a book that I definitely recommend reading particularly if you read the first book is The Shadow Cabinet by Juno Dawson. That's now out or it will be by the time you're watching this and I just think it's an absolutely fantastic book and I kind of maybe need to go and buy copies of all of the books in the series because I know I'm gonna want to reread them. I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. Getting back from being ill has been uh, an interesting journey. I definitely got struck down in my prime but I am clawing my way back to feeling good about all the things I'm reading again. Next week is meant to be my off week. I think I will probably actually keep it as my on week and just do some uh, catching up on various things. So hopefully I will speak to you then. What have you been reading? What have you been up to? Let me know down in the comments below. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media. Come hang out on Discord where we have chill chats about books. I'd like to say an enormous thank you to all the ghosts who haunt me over on Patreon. They support the channel and in return get early access to videos, bonus content, live streams, and more. If you'd like to join their number, that's in the description as well. Well, thank you so much to you for watching. That's all from me, and I will see you in the next one. It's gonna be some bloopers now. The Iskis. Oh, I can't say it. What am I currently reading? I genuinely have no idea.